Hello everyone and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're also full of bad hair days lately, but I just don't care enough to sort it out. So we're going to be doing care information today on a specific stick insect, the Pseudophasma subapterum. So, without further ado, let's crack on, have a look at these guys, and I'll fill you with as much information as I currently know. So here, walking along my pyjama trousers, yes, I still have my pyjama trousers on, sue me, is a female Pseudophasma subaptarum. So their PSG number is 299. For those of you that don't know, the PSG number is the number given by the Phasmid study group to identify each species individually. So this here is a female, and they get to around six centimeters long. I'll show you a male in just a moment and we will talk about them. So these are a completely sexual species. So they require both a male and female to produce. Now you might see me be a little bit hesitant when handling these guys. That's not because they're actually dangerous in any real way, but they do spray a white secretion from some glands. That if that were to get me right in the eye, it will cause a burning sensation. Now there are some phasmids out there with a much more potent secretion which can actually cause temporary blindness whereas with these guys as far as I'm aware it will just cause some burning and some itching. So once you've handled these guys you always want to make sure that you wash your hands before you eat or touch your eyes. Now walking along my arm here is a male. Now you'll notice he is missing his front foot there he had a bit of deformation when he was stuck in a moat, unfortunately, but he is still able to walk around fine, eat fine, and mate fine. So males get to around about 4.5 centimetres, whereas, as I said before, the females get to around about 6. You'll notice that they are a lot more slender than the females. But you'll also notice that both males and females have wings. Now, these cannot fly, nor can they glide. Their wings are kind of a source of protection. They are there to look dangerous, they are there to look colorful, and maybe they'll even have something to do with mating, but for that, I am unsure at the moment. So they'll always have their four wings, which are kind of a mesh yellow Sorry, color. I had to swap camera angles there, he was walking on the back of my arm. And then they have the hind wings, which are a reddish mesh color. You also notice that on the males here, they have that almost bluish tinge to the legs, which is actually really attractive. That sounded a little bit creepy. But you know what I mean. It's really attractive for a stick insect. Have those slightly cartoony looking eyes and appearance overall, which I think makes them a really awesome species. Right, I keep um, having to change camera angles there because it keeps walking on the, the back side of my arm where I can't film very well. Um, interesting fact about these is they were first discovered known as Neophasma subapterum, but were later discovered to be a completely different genus, which is the Pseudophasma genus. Now these guys are located in the wild in Venezuela and their food plants consist of privet, which is all that I feed mine, but they can also eat lilac and a plant that I've not heard of. I think it's Alcuba japonica. I think that's some sort of relation to a banana plant or something like that. I could be completely wrong there, but I do know they do feed on some form of banana leaves. Now we have a pair mating here in the back, so you can actually see the size difference between a mature male and a mature female. I'm sorry that the visual is not perfect, but they're only in the corners where the light can't quite get to. I've actually got another pair, if I skip along up here, it's just kind of silhouetted, there we go. So there's a better look at the difference, you can also see those front mesh yellow wings there that we spoke about earlier. So it's quite often for the males to stay on the female's back for a majority of the time. This is thought to be basically saying, she's mine, get your own. But they can easily be disturbed and will actually leave the female's back where there are some species that will just outright refuse no matter what. So I am actually gonna have to disturb these because I'm moving them in closures. But if you just watch here, try not to get myself sprayed. There's the connection, oops, in the abdomen, but still happily holding on. There we go, we've got a better view there as well. They are absolutely beautiful insects, these. 
Now another interesting thing about these, it's a little bit different from various other stick insects, is the fact that you'll find that they don't often sit on their food plant. Most stick insects will sit on their food plant for the entire time and will kind of just nibble on it throughout the day, mostly through the evening when they're more active, apart from things like ground dwellers like the Eurocanthe calcarata which will hide in the day. These guys stay unhidden and quite often not on the plant within captivity. So you will find them walking on the sides of the tank and the top of the tank more than you will actually on the food plant. They seem to only really go there to eat or to drink if there is moisture on the plant. So if you're thinking of getting yourself some of these and you've probably got a few more questions for me such as how long does it take for them to grow up? What about the ova? How long does it take to hatch? Is it going to be a nine month period like a lot of phasmids? Because I don't want to wait that long. Well, truth be told, as a smaller species, these guys tend to mature within three to four months. And they will also lay their ova around three to four weeks later. I don't actually have ova to show you right now because mine are still very, very much new to being mature they have recently molted to adulthood so i cannot show you over at the moment of this particular species but if you simply pop it into google it will show you that kind of crinkly egg that these guys do lay um, the ovo takes around four months to hatch so it's a lot less time period than certain phasmids out there now, the first people to culture these in the hobby i do believe were actually a zoo in the czech republic so they were discovered back in the 1900s but the first culture that was actually successful in captivity were by these breeders within the Czech Republic Zoo back in 2006. So these guys are actually just sitting on a custom sort of mesh lid that I've created here for their enclosure. So an enclosure set up for these guys is not difficult you just have your pot of water with some privet in they do have a higher humidity in the wild, being from Venezuela, however in captivity they do still do well pretty dry. Just make sure there's always a constant source of moisture for them to drink from by misting the sides of the enclosure. I like to use a soil based substrate just to keep that humidity that little bit more, however you do not require this to keep these. They do not bury their over, they drop them. So all they require is a kitchen towel method by placing basically a kitchen roll on the bottom of your enclosure and change that every week or so and they'll be absolutely fine. You can collect up the ova nice and easily from the kitchen towel and they will live happily like that. One thing to bear in mind though when keeping these for their enclosure is they do like high ventilation. So this is why I have an almost fully mesh top lid with just bits of plastic around the edging if you can get cross ventilation even better but unfortunately i can't with this tank but as long as you keep your ventilation really really high these guys will absolutely thrive so folks i hope you found that information useful and i hope this is a species that you may consider keeping yourself just remember about the defensive secretion that can spray from their glands especially if you have children within the house make sure you wash your hands don't rub your eyes or put it in your mouth after handling and you'll be absolutely fine. If I have missed off anything that any of you guys would like to know, please comment me below and I'll do my best to get back to you as quick as I'm able. I know I can't always reply to comments, or should I say I don't always reply to comments massively quickly. This is not me being rude guys, this is just because I do lead a pretty busy life but I'll always do my best to get back to absolutely everybody. I hope you found this informative. If you want more care sheet type videos about my phasmids, please comment below as well and let me know. I know a few of you do watch my channel purely for the phasmids. And if you want some more educational videos about them, or if you'd rather just me stick to doing some sort of fun type videos about them, that's totally up to you. As long as the information does get out there successfully for you guys to be able to keep and breed them at home, that's what matters to me. So please let me know. Thanks for watching guys. Take care. Bye bye.